it is inevitable that stumbling blocks come. But woe to him through whom they come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that he would cause one of these little ones to stumble. Be on your guard. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times a day and returns to you seven times saying, I repent, forgive him. Verse 5, the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. Hallelujah. I want to preach on the topic this morning, shift the weight. Shift the weight. Shift the weight. You can have your seat. Hallelujah. very troubled this weekend as I have followed the news feed regarding our brother Eric Gardner. How many of us know what I'm talking about? Eric Gardner. Some of us watch the news. Amen. Eric Gardner. Under 50 years old, the process of being arrested, they say, for not charging cigarette taxes. The other folks say, because he had just broken up, broken up a fight. The process of being arrested, grabbed into a chokehold which was outlawed in 1993 by a New York police officer, wrestled to the ground by at least four, but I've seen feed that's talked about as many as seven police officers, being heard repeatedly say, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. I can't breathe until he goes unconscious. The paramedics eventually come and carry him away and he dies. Apparently, he has been characterized as a 400 pound gentle giant who had severe asthma and the method that was used to bring him in cost his life. Now, I'm not here to make a statement about or against the police, but I will say, as some of you who follow me on Instagram may have read, if other people were dying of AIDS, struggling in poverty, dying at the hands of police brutality at the same rate as black men and women. It would be considered an international human rights violation. It would be called genocide. And the United States would be sending in peacekeepers to help bring it under control. Y'all not here. And my heart broke because of all of the rage that rests just beneath the surface of our communities. Especially
My heart broke as I thought about if all of this was done knowingly before cell phone cameras. What happens in the alleyways in the middle of the night when there are no cameras recording? There's a deep, a dark place deep inside of me that says, what's wrong with those people? Don't check out on me, just But I realize that if I ask the question, what's wrong with those people, I also have to ask the question, what's wrong with my people? If I ask the question, what's wrong with my people? I have to ask the question, what's wrong with Israelis? And I have to ask the question, what's wrong with Palestinians? I have to ask the question, what's wrong with Sunni Muslims? And I have to ask the question, what's wrong with Shia Muslims? Y'all not hearing me. If I ask that question, I have to ask the question, what's wrong with the Hutus? And what's wrong
as me. Can anybody? Yes. I'm just saying what I want. Your directness will come across to some as to someone who is more sensitive and mean and harsh. Because of all of the diversity that exists within human experiences, we will misunderstand each other. We will misinterpret things from time. You know, everybody that's being silent is not thinking about it. Some folks are being silent to use it as manipulation so you can come over to their way of thinking. Because of all of the diversity that exists, we will trample on each other's sensitivity from time to time. And Jesus warned us that it would be so. Somebody say amen. Because being offended is a fact of life. Having your feelings hurt, your heart broken, your expectations disappointed is a fact of life. Somebody say the fact of life. This guy said you take the good, you take the bad, you take the both, and then you have the facts of life. The facts are like there's a time. You gotta go, go and show. You're growing now. You know about the facts of life. The fact, listen, they were prophesied when the world never seems to be living up to your God's reality. They're preaching, y'all. You know, y'all ain't up. When the world never seems to be living up to your dreams, then he said, Suddenly you turn around and find about found out the facts of life are all about you. You thought it was, was what was wrong with them, but they said the facts of life are all about you. Because offense is a fact of life. When it comes to over-personalize it, nor do I have to demonize the one who brought it. Come on. Can I help you? Some of us get offended and thrown into a six-month depression every time. Because they hurt my feelings, I'm not worthy of love. Nobody's ever going to love me. Nobody sees me. Nobody knows me. Everybody just takes that. It's not that deep. I can write the check. I 
think I can spell 20,000. I think I can do that. As much as I may want to help her, I may be unable to help her. And my inability to help her will even cause me pain. Y'all not hearing me. Jesus wants to alert us to the fact that offenses will come and will be a fact of life. But the issue is not what happens to us, but what we do with what happens to us. Can I help somebody? We all have a question that we must resolve for ourselves. This is not a question that God can resolve for you. We're being lazy. We want God to be working. God says, you can do some stuff. You can do some stuff. Here's the question that we must all resolve for ourselves. What will we do with what has come to us? That's the question. Y'all ready? Yeah. Will this make me bitter? Or will this make me better? Jesus says offenses will come. People want to do crazy stuff. But the question that we must re resolve for ourselves is will this make me bitter? Or will this make me better? Can I give you a little example real quick? I posted something on Instagram yesterday. And it's the first, I've not been cursed out in real life, but I've never been cursed out on social media. <laughs> I've been cursed out by random people. I promise you, I'll be like, I don't even care enough about you for you to be that mad at me. <laughs> I've never been cursed out on social media until yesterday. Don't go on your phone and ask somebody on school right now, they want to find out. I <laughs> I see you in the spirit. But it's safe. <laughs> and I started to block it for that reason. I was just sharing, you know, what was on my heart. Maybe I so a couple people would be able to identify, you know, quit that little heart. Maybe give a little comments. Yeah, we hear you. Put my little heart out there, and this man all the way curse me out. And I'm like, first of all, you don't follow me, I don't follow you. That suggests something. I don't know you. You don't know me. And I don't care enough about what you think to follow me. Oh, so, okay, so that's number one. But I wrote it, and I was immediately offended. Because Instagram has been the same place to kind of go and say, hey, this is what's happening. People say, yay, congratulations, like that. You know, I spy on some of y'all. I see your stuff going on Instagram. <laughs> then I call you, but I like, hey, so what's going on? I heard you yelling. <laughs> Oh, she been in prison. She's been on Instagram. But hey, I <laughs> Amy when God told me, I saw it in your newsfeed. I saw it in your newsfeed. I, I saw it in your newsfeed. That, that's how I know how to pray for you. Not by how you look when you show up here, but what's showing up in your feet on Wednesday. Oh, say that. Say that. If you don't hear it, everybody be looking all right. And then by Wednesday, you like, yeah, okay. <laughs> so I was like, oh, like, do you know what was what I immediately went to do. Y'all ready? Immediately, I went to delete the interaction and block the connection. He offended me. I want to delete the interaction and block the connection. Immediately. But you know how sometimes you try to do something on Instagram, even though we're supposed to be able to do it, it don't do it. I'm looking at it like, I know this can happen because this has happened to me. I made a comment and somebody deleted it. I was like, who is this? I went through the feed trying to find my comment. They straight deleted me. So I know it's possible. <laughs> Getting ready to preach about offense on Sunday. Straight deleting and blocking people on Saturday. Because they offended me. But isn't that what we do in our real life relationships? Yep. People offend us. And so we delete and block them. We act as if they no longer exist. Come on, somebody. 
somebody, someone around in your house, and you act like they don't exist. So I had a death in my family and I had to go to a funeral on Wednesday and now I gotta deal with stuff because there's some stuff I've been acting like don't oh, yeah. acting like it don't exist. Now I might have to sit next to don't exist at the funeral. <laughs> we act like we can easily delete them and block them from further connection as if even after we delete them from our social media feed, there's not still a trail. So all you gotta do is know how to look for it. And even though we said we put it out, we said we put it out of our mind, we said we put it out of our awareness, we said we're not gonna be concerned about it, we're still connected to it. Because when we lay down at night, we're still thinking, I can't believe they said that. We said we're not gonna deal with them anymore, but the next time we see them, we get that headache creep, creeping up the back of our necks. We said that we've gotten over and forget about it, but every time somebody brings up their name, we go into a rage. Y'all want to leave me out here like I'm by myself? Amen. Come on, all y'all think about somebody right now. You're like, yeah. But can I share three truths with you? Truth number one. What happens to you does not have to get in you. Amen. <laughs> Truth number two, what got in you does not have to stay in you. And truth number three, this is the one you want to like, what is in you will determine what comes out of you. We wonder why we keep attracting venomous relationships. Maybe because they catch the scent of venom when you walk by. This is what Jesus is talking about when he says that offenses will come to you, but woe to the one through whom they come. The boss will get on your nerves, but woe to you that use that as an excuse to go home and beat your wife. Yes. Yes. Jesus. See? It's still there. Like, yes! 
because some folks have a hard time taking a shower after that. <laughs> Stuff when you back into the shower, like, uh -huh. We're going to teach you how to swim today. <laughs> Dad, no. But look at what Jesus said. The first stage of drowning is shock or surprise. Come on, y'all, that almost drowned. You know, you was out there just <laughs> Then that, like, wave came. Five minutes, ten days. 
Because it all really depends on the nature of the relationship. Some of us are good at not talking. I'm the ice queen. I'm getting delivered. Y'all pray for me. Pray for me. Straight face, all year. All year. Let you know I see you. Pray. Y'all just pray. Y'all getting better. God, listen. This is why I gotta preach this so I can be helped. And realize that the very strategy that you used to protect yourself only made matters worse. Come on, you ever been in an argument? Everybody been in an argument. You know that place where the debate shifts into another gear? It's usually one comment. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's just one line. And it's it's not always what was said, but it's usually yeah, see? <laughs> Come on, and it's women talking right now because it's usually. <laughs> Tell the truth in God's house. It's usually us. Yes. Because there's a stage in drowning and 
which you become unconscious. You have been holding your breath and trying to protect yourself so long. You start to shut down. I wonder if anybody walked into the house of God and shut down this morning. And nobody can tell me this about this because I'm the master of this. I shut down so well that I don't even realize that I was shut down until I moved back up. Hey, do anybody, can anybody just want, I just need one person. That's it. Is. Unconsciousness. 
There are only two stages. One is called hypoxic convulsion, in which there are reactions that are not responses. Just striking out that doesn't make sense, that doesn't have context. And that's why the next day when you come home with a green pocketbook, even though I've been wanting a microcourse pocketbook for six months and you've been saving up for the microcourse pocketbook for six months and you are so happy to now bring you this nice green microcourse pocketbook and I bring it and present you bring it and present it to me and I'll take a fight. Come on, hypoxic convulsion. It doesn't make sense, but this I am so shut down that I'm now responding in a way that doesn't even make sense. Y'all with me? Erratic, illogical reactions because I have been shut down so long. Things that nobody, even the closest people to me, do not understand because I have been shut down so long. And the only stage after hypoxic convulsions is death. That means that there's no more ability for anything to come in, and there's no more ability for anything to come out. Now listen to this, I'm almost done. The scariest part of it all is that most drowning victims don't yell, don't wave their arms, and don't alert anyone that they're in trouble. That means that they are slipping away and everybody else is playing in the water and don't even recognize it. So we visit our truths. Truth one, what happens to you does not have to get in you. Truth two, what got in you does not have to stay in you. And truth three, what is in you will determine what comes out of you. We're getting ready to offer our babies in dedication to the Lord. So there is before us all of the hope of the future. But the truth is that what comes out of us as parents is a direct reflection of what's already in us. Come on. What comes out of us as husbands and wives and boyfriends and girlfriends and playmates and yoke mates and all that stuff, what comes out of us is a direct reflection of what is already in us. I just need one person to say, how do I get it out of me? How do I get it out? How do I get the poison of what came to me out of me? How do I get the disappointment that came to me out of me? How do I get the pain that came to me out of me? How do I get the rejection? I'm coming as the spirit of rejection in this house in the name of the Lord Jesus. How do I get the rejection that came to me out of me? One solution. Shift the way. This is what we do. We take the responsibility or the weight of making it right as our personal job. So someone hurt us, and now it becomes my personal responsibility to make it right. So I even do everything I can to hurt them. Come on. If you hurt me, I'm going to say everything I can. I'm going to listen. Some of y'all, I know. I'm going to look over here. I'm going to break up everything that I can. Physically, the stuff that they got. You hurt me, I'm going to break your stuff up. I'm just looking right here. Anybody think I'm talking about you? We feel the weight of making it right. We feel the weight of making it even. So we want to tell all of our friends about it so all of our friends will know how horrible they are. We want to tell all of our family members because we feel the weight of making it right. We feel the weight of making it even. And even if we don't have close proximity to them, listen, some of us are so mad at folks that are dead and we still feel the weight of making it even. We're playing things over and over in our minds. Come on, you ever And then what happened? You tell them all, then you revise the telling. 
You are not. Then you are not. Say it. And you, you, in, you in your bed, in your place of peace, just going off in your mind, going off, going off, going off, going off. Use the language that you wouldn't even use out your mouth. Maybe, maybe you will. You just going off. You are trying to make it right. Trying to say, when they said this, I should have said that. <laughs> Y'all come on. When I saw this, I <laughs> Try to make it right. Yes, Try to leave in the sore. Try to make them hurt like you hurt. Jesus says, shift the weight. What are you talking about, Pastor Shannon? Shift the weight from making it right, the weight of responsibility to make it right, shift it from you over to God. Can I tell you that that is what forgiveness is? Forgiveness is I don't remember no more. You not, listen, you don't get amnesia. Some stuff you keep remembering and you remember more as time goes on. Once you come out the fade, out the, out the fog, you know, you start seeing stuff you never saw. But forgiveness is saying, I am not left to be responsible for making it right. I don't want to trust God to make it right. Forgiveness is saying, I am not going to keep drinking poison and expecting it to hurt the person that hurt me. Forgiveness is saying, I am going to, de I am going to deprive this thing of its power over me by stop obsessing about how to get even and leave that to God. Forgiveness is a process. I didn't say that last week. It's not an event. It's a process. So that means we got to keep. Come on. Anybody, you got you to keep. Ain't like you just decide to forgive and it's over. If you heard me, I will forgive you. That means that every time it comes up and I want to kill you in my mind, I'm going to shift the weight. Come on. Because it's going to come up again. It's going to come up the next time I see flowers. Because you have on a flower shirt when you act crazy to it. So every time I see somebody with that shirt, I'm like, ooh. But I'm going to shift the weight. I'm going to shift the weight. Next time I see somebody with that hairstyle, and, and it, come on, y'all know how this goes. I, I see somebody with that hairstyle, I start twerking. I don't even know. That's not twerking. That's not the right thing. That's not the right thing. <laughs> Finding us in our two weeks of better and pulling. 
pulling us right back to that place of pain. We take a risk for a moment and are proud that we took one step only to find those same insecurities, those same fears, those same inadequacies waiting for us. And I tell you, one of the most depressing seasons of my life is when I finish my doctorate. Two percent of people, I think maybe it's three now, in the world have a PhD. And I was one of that two or three percent. And I was so depressed because I was sitting on my bed, Dr. Shannon Mason, in the same place that had been haunting me down since I was six years old was sitting right there with me. I thought success would chase away the demons, but the truth is, the demons could always find me. Somehow, somebody always left them a forward in address. But God says today, I want to free you for real. I want to liberate you in truth. The reality is that some of us have had so many false starts, we don't even really believe. Come on. Somebody say stuff when you're ready, you know, heard that before. Come on, I've done that before. Been good for, you know, a month or two. What is it that keeps us going back? trying to figure it out for all these years and had it yet. You've been trying to get even and get right and fix it all this time and had it yet. I'm willing to shift the weight to me. Let me do what you cannot. You've been trying to heal yourself with the healer. been trying to make sense of it rather than releasing it. And so he extends to us shift the weight. The truth is that this is what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. He has taken the weight of our sin. Christ Jesus. 
That's what he's done. That's what he's done. So that we no longer have to suffer guilt and shame for the things that we have done. We no longer have to live in fear of retribution. But we can shift the way to Jesus. And God wants you to know today that just as he has done that for us, he desires to do it again for you. My prayer today is that as we bring these babies to dedicate them to the Lord, that in presenting them, we would also be presenting Say, God, we desire more. More peace. More joy. More love. More hope. More courage. More tenacity. More perseverance. More zeal. More openness. And all of those things are available to us. But we're chasing them with the weight of the past tied to our feet. And so, Father, my prayer is Jesus spoke to them about the fence and compared it to drowning. They said, Lord, increase our faith. Hallelujah. Increase our faith, God. I want to let go of this, but increase my faith, oh God. I want to trust you to handle this, but increase my faith, oh God. I want to be able to release this to you, but increase my faith. God, I want to be able to trust you with this, but I need you to increase my faith, oh God. Every head. 